Hello everyone, this is Nitin and I will be your host today for this webinar session and uh, have uh, uh, this presentation which is based on the topic called building your own algos with ADL and this is uh, co-presented by Trading Technologies. We'll be starting with the presentation in a couple of minutes and before that uh, but, uh, just like I'm just glad to announce that we have uh, participants for the session from 66 different countries and uh, yeah so uh, the presenter for today's webinar session is um, Mr. Andrew Reynolds who is the product manager from automated trading uh, tools uh, which is uh, represented by the company trading technologies Okay, so just to give you a brief introduction about Andrew, I'll start my presentation here, just a moment. All right, so uh, I was just talking about uh, Andrew Reynolds, the product manager for automated trading uh, tools at Trading Technologies. Andrew Reynolds has been at Trading Technologies for 15 years. He uh, currently a product manager who is responsible for product strategy for ADL and Trading Technologies trading. Prior to joining Trading Technology, Andrew was vice president of uh, Treasury System at AB and Ambro uh, Bank for several years, where he led uh, design efforts in the development of trading systems for interest rate derivatives. He has also worked as a developer at the First National Bank of Chicago and Oknor and Associates, a proprietary trading firm. Andrew holds a BA in physics from the University of Rochester, a BS in computer science from Northeastern Illinois University, and an MS in nuclear science from the Georgia Institute of Technology. So, Andrew, uh, what I'm going to do now is pass the controls over to you uh, so that we can go ahead and start with the presentation. Uh, please unmute your phone and let's go ahead and get started. Thanks again for joining us, Andrew, and uh, wish you all the best. Uh, okay, so I think that's I think that was done. Okay, so uh, can everyone hear me now, right? Okay, um, thank you, Nitin. I was glad, uh, glad to join you today. Um, as, he, as Nitin said, my name is Andrew Reynolds and I work here at Trading Technologies. Um, Trading Technologies, also known in the industry as TT, um, creates software and, in, and infrastructure solutions for a wide variety of users, um, including prop traders, brokers, money managers, CTAs, hedge funds, and commercial hedgers. Um, TT's been in business for over 20 years and has 13 global offices and over 350 employees worldwide. Um, I'm a product manager here at TT for many of the automated trading tools, as well as our trading APIs. And one of those tools is the Algo Design Lab, or, or ADL. Uh, ADL is an interactive graphic tool, a graphical tool for creating algos. So I want to take a, take a brief moment here and talk about why ADL was created, um, to basically go over the business purpose of, and the, the problem that we're trying to solve here. Prior to the inception of ADL, traders who wanted to write algos had to learn to write code. And even if they knew how to write code or hired someone who could, it took a fair amount of time to develop an algo. The code, compile, test, debug cycle in traditional programming languages is rather lengthy. Um, and these, although these languages are very flexible, um, there's a cost to that in terms of the development cycle. ADL was developed to simplify the development of trading algorithms. That was its, its explicit purpose. ADL provides traders with an intuitive interactive tool that allows traders to design, test, and deploy trading algorithms without ever having to write a single line of code. This is significant as it lowers the barrier of entry in terms of technical ability. It also offers the ability to rapidly develop algos to seize and act on fleeting market opportunities in timeframes that were difficult or, or even impossible to achieve previously. This is significant from a time to market perspective. And even those who can write code will find this will find real value in this. And finally, ADL converts into well-tested code, which is run on co-located high-performance servers for the best possible performance. 
So let's shift over to the canvas here. So this is the ADL canvas. The left side consists of a series of blocks where each represents a given trading, a given trading concept or operation. For example, there are blocks for defining instruments, subscribing for market data, managing orders, handling order events, performing arithmetic operations, creating conditional logic, and more. Um, this list is quite rich. You create an algo by dragging blocks onto the canvas and connecting them to represent your logic. So in this case, I'll connect the fill output of what is essential, what is the order block to some to an alert. Each block has a series of properties that's specific to them. And notice when I select the alert block here, the properties for the alert block appear on the right hand side here. For example, the alert block allows developers to send alerts to the algo operator. These alerts can be in the form of auto trail messages and or sounds. It's useful to change the name of a block to reflect what they actually do. That way, when you search for them later on, um, it'll make them easier to find. Um, and we'll go over some of the search mechanisms in a bit. One of the unique features you can do is you can group two or more blocks together to create what we call a group block. Group blocks are generally used to encapsulate specific logic. Um, they can have inputs as well as outputs. So I can create, for example, a numeric input connector, and I can create a numeric or some kind of output connector. So you'll notice when we view this group block from the outside, this is encapsulated, encapsulated logic, and here's the input parameters and output parameters to which you can connect. A unique feature of group blocks is that they, that they can be saved as what we call library blocks. So I can say save this as a library block. Library blocks can, can be imported and used by other algos. This is useful if you have logic that you want to reuse in other algos. As your algos get larger, you can add book, bookmarks to make, make uh, certain sections easier to find. So you'll note here I can add a bookmark for this particular section, and I'll call it inside. And I can move to the outside. I can go to the bookmark here. I can click on the, I can click on the inside bookmark. Sorry, I'm having difficulties here. There we go. And it will take me, oops, sorry. So let's go back on the inside here. I will add a bookmark called ABC. If I return to the outside. I click on ABC, you'll notice here it'll take me directly to that location. This is really useful because as your algos get larger, you can, you can segment them into certain sections and this makes it very easy for them to define different sections of your algo. Um, so you can search in that mechanism and you can also go into the search bar up here and if you type period, you'll notice that immediately the list of bookmarks that I have created is, is already present. So I can type ABC and if I click on here, this will effectively take, take me to the location that I bookmarked. You can also search for indiv individual blocks by typing the ampersand sign. And we can say, for example, we named our alert block to be a fill alert, and that will highlight and find that directly for you as well. So the search block mechanism also, also provides you with some advanced features, such as the ability to, to preset values. So if I wanted to, for example, to, uh, to extract the bid price, I can drag the field block onto the canvas. I can then change field property to be bid price, and then I'm ready to go. Or you can use the search mechanism to effectively just type bid, and then grab a hold of this block, drag it onto the canvas, and voila, you have what you need. Now, these are, these are, these are reasonably small things, but they really help to, to, to speed the, the way uh, speed development along as it were. Um, another feature you can, you can utilize in the search mechanism is you can type the number five, for example, and this will bring up a number block pre-populated with the number five. So something else this provides is, something, 
EDL also employs what we call predictive techniques to detect potential block connections as you arrange things. So for example, if I were to bring in an instrument block, a price block, something along this nature, you'll notice if I hold down the shift key, it will automatically detect exactly what it is we're trying to do. So let's get rid of this group block for just a moment. <clears throat> And you'll notice as I hold down the shift key, it's going to automatically detect what it is that I'm trying to do. So we'll bring in one more block here, a number block, just to show you how this works. And again, as you can see, it's already picking up on what it is that I'm trying to do. So there's predictive analytics in here um, that are basically helping you along. So I can left click on any one of these particular connections, and the connection will be made for you. Um, or I can right click on the mouse and all the connections that we made. This is really useful in the sense that, again, it speeds, speeds the development time of algos. So these are just a few of the advanced features for making, uh, for developing algos faster. So we'll go back to presentation. So what we'll talk about next is is basically what I refer to as classifications of algos. Now, you can classify algos in a whole number of ways, but for the purposes of this discussion, I think it'll be easier if we kind of broke them down in this, in this sort of way. So um, you have those algos that consist only of entry side logic, um, those that consist only of exit side logic, and those that consist of both entry and exit side logic. So those that consist of entry side logic are useful um, for just, for example, for just getting into a position. You just want to get a position on, you're not sure exactly how you're going to get out of that position yet, but, um, or a portfolio manager, for example, who wants to just get into a position. Um, these sorts of algos would be useful in that sort of manner. You have those that consist of exit side logic. Um, in these particular cases, you have, for example, an order that's working in the markets, and you want to attach algorithmic logic to it. Um, this would contain exit side logic, um, and you would attach it to an existing working order. Then you have those that consist of both entry and exit side logic. Um, you have a trader that wants to control both the entry and the exits using an algorithm. So I've kind of used, again, the, this sort of classification. Um, this is just for, for the purposes of this discussion. Um, it may make talking about things a little bit simpler. So what we'll start out with is what I'm going to demonstrate next is, is to create an algorithm that only has entry side logic. Specifically, we'll develop an algorithm that will enter a limit order, we'll join the bid, um, and along the way, we'll just demonstrate some of the unique features of ADL. So we'll start out by dragging what we call an order block onto the canvas. Notice in the properties here that this is a limit order, so it requires an instrument, a price, and a quantity. Um, but notice as we do this, user feedback is immediately reported. So you'll notice here we have three errors. An instrument's required, a quantity, and a price. Um, this feedback is given in real time, um, and in particular, these errors denote that we need to provide an instrument, a quantity, a price for the limit order that we'll submit. So we'll begin to resolve this by grabbing, for example, an instrument block, and we'll... There we go. And we'll use, for example, uh, GE SEP24. It's a nice, quiet market. Um, and we'll connect it directly to the instrument port. Notice as soon as I did that, the error went away. You'll see it again. So we'll, de we'll delete the connection. Notice the error is back. As I reconnect it, the error is gone. So we're giving real-time feedback um, to, to the user as, as the, the algo is developed. Next, we'll grab a field block. Now, a field block is basically a means for extracting market data. You'll notice in the list of properties that you can extract, this includes a variety of things. Um, the inside markets, um, you can extract depth, um, uh, direct markets, implied markets, um, open, close, high, low, settle, et cetera. So in this particular case, I want to extract the bid price, and I'm going to attach the instrument to this bid price, because this is the one I'm talking about. 
notice right away that we can see the bid price on the canvas being 97.15 and a half. Um, again, this is this is immediate feedback we're giving to the user so that as you're developing the algo, it's almost as if you're debugging and at the same exact time. So we will attach the bid price to the bid to the price input of the limit order. And last, we will attach a quantity. Just do a one lap for now. We will attach this directly to here. So notice as we connect these, these blocks, the, the immediate feedback continues. Um, the working quantity, for example, outputs of the order block is zero because we're not working anything yet. So we'll also add an alert block here so that when we get filled, we'll be able to notify the operator. So I'll add a message to the operator. So having alert blocks is, is really useful, especially if a trader is running many algos. Um, the trader is then able, able to distinguish what's happening with various algos, whether it be by audit trail messages or sometimes by sound. Um, they're able to, to actually ascertain actually um, what exactly is going on with an algo. So to test this, we simply need to just, let me make sure we've got an account specified. Okay, hold on a second. We're gonna log in here again. All right, let's try this again, sorry. Okay, well, obviously we're having some technical difficulties here in simulations, so. Oh, where am I? Uh, that's probably why, because I'm not in simulation. Apologies for that. Okay, so apologies, we're having some te technical difficulties here, but effectively what happens is you would press play, and when you press play, the your orders actually appear in the simulation market. Um, they're displayed, you can see them in the front end, um, and, and you're able to actually interact with them as well. Um, as the algo runs, when you press play, and we'll press play here for a moment. So as you can see, what's actually happening here is I put a one lot in, at a price of 97.15 and a half, and notice my working quantity is now one. Um, if I stop the algo, notice everything will reset, and notice I'm working zero at this particular point. But if I start to play the algo again, you'll see I'm working in one lot. So I'm actually able to play through the logic as it occurs. So again, this type, of, this type of algo is useful where you just want to take on a position and, and decide later on how to exit that particular position. This is pure entry side logic only. Um, and this is one type of algo that you can create. So next what we'll do is, we'll do first, we'll move these things over. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add exit side logic to create an algo that has both entry and exit side logic. So to do this, we'll start out by adding an order block, and this order block we will set to be a cell limit order. And next, we will add what we call a message info extractor and attach it to the fill output port of our initial order. What this block does is it allows you to extract information about the messages that are being, being fed through it. In this particular case, the messages are fills, and we will extract the fill price and the fill quantity. So we wanna set the hedge order to be one tick greater than our fill price. So we'll add another field block to extract the minimum tick size. So we know exactly what that is. For the minimum tick increment. And we will add this 
to the fill price. This then becomes the price of our sell limit order. To improve readability, one of the things I can do, you notice I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get a lot of lines here. And to improve readability, one of the things you can do is you can click on any one of these connections and you can say convert to a jump block. What jump blocks effectively are, are invisible connections. Um, it's really the same thing as having, a, having a, a direct connection, but it helps to improve readability of some of the algos. So we'll take the instrument. We'll also attach it to the, to the cell block, because we're going to sell, put a, a cell limit order in the same instrument. And in terms of quantity, we're going to use the same quantity as our fill quantity. So now we have an algo which will enter a buy limit order, which follows the bid. So every time the bid changes, this limit order is going to change, is going to get a bit, uh, is going to have its price changed. So this will continue to follow the bid. When it's filled, it will enter a sell limit order at, at a price of one tick greater than the fill price. So here's where, where we'll extract the fill price and fill quantity. We will add the minimum tick increment to the fill price and use that as the price of our sell order. The quantity again will be equal to the fill quantity itself and we're going to sell, we're going to set the instrument to be the same instrument that we're buying. So this is a simple example of a, of, of a basic scalper, but it's the basis for much more complex variations of scalping. Um, for example, you may not want your quoting order to be entered if the market is trending down. So you may end up doing something like um, you would extract, for example, the ask quantity. So you can, ex whoops, I didn't, ex didn't select it. So we may want to extract the ask quantity and say, you know what, um, in this particular exam, in this particular instance, I only, I only want to work this order. If the ask quantity is greater than zero, is greater than 100. And I would feed that into the on off portion of the, of the order block. And what that would do effectively is it would delete the order from the market if the, the ask quantity, if, the, if this condition here isn't met. So you can continue to, to add more and more variations on this to create custom algos, um, because this is what really makes every, every algo unique. But this basic scalping algorithm really is the basis for a lot of the, a lot of the scalping algorithms that people develop. It has an entry point and it has an exit point. So next we'll cover creating an algo that has only exit side logic. And what we'll do here is we will take out all of our entry side logic. So all of our entry side logic is gone and we will add to this algo what we call an existing order block. Now an existing order block when you add it to an algo, automatically uh, requires that an order ID of an existing order be provided to the algo. So this, for this kind of algo, what you're going to do is you're going to apply it to a working order in the market. We'll then add what we call a single order container and attach that, attach the existing order block to the single order container. We'll then attach the, so the messages coming out of the single single order container will consist of both order, order change, order delete, order add messages, et cetera. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach the output of this directly to what we call a demultiplexer, which breaks apart the messages into their type. And we will connect the fill messages to the, to the, previous, um, to the previous logic that we created. So one thing, since we don't really know what the instrument of this order is, what we can do is when the fill is achieved, we can also extract the instrument. And then we can attach the instrument directly to where it is needed. So
So effectively what we have here is we have an algo that can be applied to any working order that when filled will automatically put in a cell limit order one tick over the fill price at a quantity to be this, where the quantity is the same as the fill quantity itself. This, this type of algo is generally referred to as an OMA, an order management algo. Um, you're applying algo logic to an existing order. Um, and these are very common. People like to get into positions or get, get into, basically put an order in where they feel the market is going to go and then later apply algorithmic logic to it. Also note that the order, the order which this algo is now managing can be, can be manipulated by simply adding logic to the imports, input ports of the single order container block. So at present, the working order is not being manipulated by this algo. It's just going to react to the fills that occur. What you can do is you can add logic directly to this algorithm to manipulate price, the quantity, uh, the stop price, if, if in fact this is a stop, or if it's an iceberg, you can manipulate the disclosed quantity. So can, you can manipulate this order as you see fit. One such use case for doing this would be, for example, a, a bid drifter. So let's say, for example, uh, you need to get filled by the end of the day, you need to be flat, um, but you don't want to cross the market right away. So you may add logic into these ports that effectively says something, uh, something of the type, every, every 15 seconds, raise, uh, increase my price another tick. Um, and you can continue to do that in, in, until you get filled. And if you're, if you're working a lot of orders, um, it becomes very simple to apply this sort of logic to, to many of them at the same time. Andrew, this is built obviously for like a buy order. Can I flip that to a sell order in case I want to actually? You can, I mean. Buy a sure. short order? Yeah, I mean, one of the things you can do is a lot of these blocks offer what we call flip to sell functionality. So in this particular case, I would apply it to here and to here, and what that will do is based on um, based on the, the side of the order that's coming in, um, it will flip the logic. So for example, a sell order may become a buy order and a plus block may become a minus block in these particular instances. Okay. All right, so we've, we've covered the basic, the, the three basic types of algos. You've got those that require only the, um, those that require only the, the uh, sorry, the technical difficulty here again. So we have algos that require only uh, the, the entry side of the logic, those that require only the exit side of the logic, and those that require both. So um, I've kind of covered all three of these. Are, are there any questions at this point? Okay, so a couple of other things I want to cover here. As I develop these algos, you, you may have noticed there were some things that were prohibited. Um, specifically, ADL does several types of checking. Uh, the first of these, notice if I grab a couple of blocks and put them on the screen here. Notice if I try to attach the instrument to the quantity, you'll notice it's prohibited as well as the price. The on-off button, the on-off port here is a Boolean. So this is also prohibited. ADL does basically data type checking to ensure that you're matching up the correct, the correct, uh, the correct data types. Traditional programming languages may allow such things depending upon the context of how they're done, but this obviously may result in unexpected behavior at best. Um, at worst, you can cause you all kinds of problems. The second, the second of these is what we call logic checking. Now, if I grabbed an, a couple of ad blocks and I connected them together. You'll notice if I try to take the output port of this ad block and attach it to the input port of this one, it's going to prohibit that because what this is going to give you is basically a calculation infinite loop. These, these calculations will be made that the output is going to be shoved back in again, which is then going to cause another loop to, to occur as, as the calculation is done again. So this is, this is the type of behavior that ADL prohibits. Um, again, in, in, in traditional programming languages, they may not warn you of such things. Um, we've all, anybody that's, that's done any kind of, kind of, any kind of programming um, has probably, at least inadvertently at some point in time, written an infinite loop. Um, I know myself, I have. Um, and it's one of the great things, one of the big features of ADL is, is that it prohibits you from doing such things because it's able to detect when you're, when you're going to 
encounter such situations. And it's ADL is able to do this because it's, it's what we call a context specific language. It has context about what it is that you're trying to do. So it's able to ascertain um, these sorts of conditions when they occur and prohibit the ones that are going to be potentially dangerous. One other thing that ADL, that ADL offers, which is actually incredibly useful, is what we call the PL risk block. Now, when combined with a number block, what this does is it allows developers to, to protect themselves against PL losses. So if I set my loss, for example, here to be my $100, this out, when this algo runs, it will automatically pause if, the, if this particular instance of an algo loses more than $100. Um, if, it's, if, it, if it's $100 or exceeds $100, it will automatically stop. And this protects you in a lot of ways. Um, you, don't have to, 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 um, you don't have to watch it as closely um, in terms of its P&L. Um, you can certainly set P&L limits on each individual instance. That way you're, so what I can do effectively is I can make this, this particular variable use it to find. And now for each instance that I launch, I can set a, a max P&L limit for each one of these things. It's a great safety mechanism. Um, and I know myself, I use it all the time uh, because I certainly don't want to lose more than a certain amount. If my account limit is $10,000, um, I certainly don't want to lose more than a small amount in case that in case there's something that's some sort of logic that maybe I, I, I did inappropriately in my algo itself. Let's see if I can get these works, see if I can get this environment cooperating again. What? Okay. So once you've created your algos um, and you put in the sufficient safeguards that we discussed, um, you can run algos from several widgets within the front end, um, auto trader, algo dashboard, order book, um, MB Trader, order ticket. One of the real nice features of, of being able to launch algos in multiple ways is it, you, can, you can pick the one that base, that suits your purpose. So for, for larger, uh, larger, more complex algos, um, I will gener generally use Auto Trader or Algo Dashboard. Um, order Book is mainly used for launching what we call order management algos only, or OMAs. Um, oh, since OMAs um, are applied to existing working orders, the Order Book is a natural place from which to launch these algos. You choose an order, you apply the order management algo, and the order, the, the, the order management algo then takes possession of that order and manages it. You can also launch algos from MD Trader. Now, MD Trader is, 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 is a feature-rich UI um, that allows you to, to launch, it, launch orders with a single click. Um, you can also do such things. Let me delete some of these things. You can also do such things by effectively using what we call, sorry, let me get a few blocks in here. If I set my types of these to be order instrument, variable types to be order price, and this to be order quantity. And hook these up. Now, what I've effectively done is I've just created a very small algo, but what this does now is I can launch this algo from MD Trader. So within a single click, when I if I choose this algo with an MD Trader and I click in the ladder, what effectively happens is the instrument that I've the, the instrument that is associated with that MD trader gets supplied here. The price that I've clicked on gets applied here, and the quantity that I've clicked on that I've included gets applied here. So you can effectively do one click launching of algos directly from the, M, from the MD trader ladder. Um, it's incredibly useful and it's very popular with our customers. So when you launch an algorithm, if it's a, if it's a single if you're dealing with a single instrument, um, we will know we will know exactly where to to uh, which algo server to which to to locate that algo. Um, so if you're choosing a CM instrument, we'll automatically launch um, that algo to to our co our co location facilities in Aurora. Um, if you choose a Eurex instrument, we will we will send it to a, a the co location facility in Frankfurt. Um, if you have more than one instrument, we will allow you to select the co location facility. Um, and we will then send that algo to one of the servers that we have located in these co-location facilities um, for running. Um, 
And from, from there and from the front end, users can easily launch their algorithms, update parameters, and, and monitor their algos as, as, they, as they continue to progress. Can I set different accounts based, per, based on the algo? Um, you can. So when you specify for each instrument that you're going to specify here, um, you'll notice that you specify an account here. So for every instrument, um, you can specify a different account, yes. And can I set that on the fly when I actually launch the algo? You can. <clears throat> so you'll notice that when you when you bring this up in, in one of the ways in the front end, when you launch it, you'll be presented not only with the instrument that you're going to select, but the account associated with, the, with that instrument. Are there are there any other questions at this point? Okay, um, well, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, if you have any further questions, like I said, you can contact us at tradingtechnologies.com. Um, we've got a whole series of uh, videos as well as learning material regarding ADL um, that can be found on our website. Um, we're continuing to expand on that as well. There's also a website called community.tradingtechnologies.com, um, which is actually a support form that we use, but it's a very active form for discussion involving all things ADL. Um, we post a number of things, as well as our, our customers do, um, involving some of the things that you can do with ADL um, and how they work. Um, so if you're looking for specific example, examples and things of that nature, you can go there as well. Nitin, again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Um, do you want to take control of the presentation now? Thank you for the excellent presentation, Andrew. It was very enlightening, and I hope everyone learned a lot from it. Uh, we have a Q&A session lined up. And uh, uh, as you can see on your uh, screen, there is a questions panel where uh, a tab called questions where you can just share this with us. And at the end of the session, we'll, uh, Andrew will address those questions and he'll uh, try and answer all the questions that you have shared with us. So uh, before we move on to the Q&A session, I have uh, 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 something to share with you. That is the EPAD program by Quantity. So uh, the executive program in algorithmic trading at Condensity uh, is basically designed for professionals uh, who, uh, I mean, it's designed for professionals who uh, want to be a professional uh, or a professional algorithmic traders. The uh, program, uh, we have the next batch coming up in the next two days. So that is the last batch for the year 2017. You can visit our website, condensity.com slash EPAD for more information on the EPAD program. We have uh, more than 10,000 professionals from more than 100 countries who have uh, benefited from the educational initiatives taken by Condensity, including the EPAD program. So a lot of professionals who have uh, pursued their career in algorithmic trading after getting certified from EPAD program. So uh, but before we move on to the Q&A session, uh, I can see we have uh, uh, some of the questions lined up. Uh, I would like to hand over the presentation rights again back to Andrew. Give me just a moment. And in the meantime, if you have any more queries, you can use the same question tab and keep on sharing the questions and we'll address in the next uh, few seconds. Andrew, please go ahead and you can uh, uh, address the questions that we have in the questions panel. Okay. Um, Nitin, I'm not seeing any questions here at this point. Do you see them? Maybe it's just that I don't have visibility to them. Ah, okay, now I'm beginning to see them. Um, okay. Okay, so um, let me 
glance through some of these so that I'm do a little preparation for them. Okay, so one one of the questions is: Is ADL meant to be used only with parameters of limit order limit order book limit order book, or can it be applied to uh, chart patterns? One of the things that we we're we're going to be adding um, shortly actually is what we call the analytics block. Um, the analytics block will allow you to extract historical data. Um, we do have 10 years worth of historical data, um, and you'll, we will have built-in uh, studies that, that can be performed um, on that data um, that you can utilize, or you could just pull out the historical data and build your custom studies directly into the algorithm itself. Um, you can use that to drive some of these, drive some of your orders um, directly. You, sorry, you will, will be able to do that directly from ADL. Um, probably that'll probably be coming the first half of next year. Um, can we do a look back on price or other attributes? And if so, how? You can do a look back. I mean, one of the things you can do is you can, you can use, utilize what's called, what we call a value bucket block. Value bucket block is, is used for storing things um, that you want to later look up. So you can store as, as many values as you want. Um, it's basically a key value sort of, sort of block um, where, you, where you will store things. You can then you can use a discrete message to effectively store things, and then you can look them up by basically changing the lookup index, and the value associated with that key will appear out here. So yes, you can use that to store store things. So if I want to do something like look at the price right now relative to where the price of the notes were when the unemployment number was released, I can do that. Yes, yes. I mean, if, if, if you can do that in real time as well. So let's say you want to you want to every every minute you want to take a you want to take a snapshot of where the LTP is. Um, so you'd set off a timer. And then at, at, at every minute, you look at the, at the LTP at that particular point, store it in this block, and you can continue to store those sorts of things. And then you can look them back up again as, as on an as-needed basis. So it's another one here. I'm not sure what that one is, prices. Um, OK, so can it be connected to any broker platforms? Um, we are broker neutral, um, so any broker that supports our platform, um, you can utilize um, this offer directly through any of them. Um, we do not, um, like I said, we're, we're broker neutral in that sort of sense. You can, you can trade through multiple brokers through one instance of the platform too. Yep. So you can so you can have an account that belongs to one broker and an account that belongs to another broker, and you can have a single algo algo that's actually trading through two brokers at the same time. Is this presentation available online? Um, we can make it available. Um, Nitin, I'm not sure if you're recording this and you offer this as a recording. Um, it's possible. Uh, if not, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we can we can provide something. Um, keep in mind that what we're doing right now is we're up, we're making a lot of updates to the documentation to make it much more visual. So a lot of the kind of a lot of the concepts that you're seeing here, um, you'll be able to see directly within the, within the the interactive documentation. Um, You'll be able to click on videos. They'll walk you through a lot of these, a lot of these sorts of scenarios, and and the use cases for each and every one of the blocks that we offer. Um, what else? No, we don't really have access to any of the primary Indian exchanges at this time, although we do have a strong base of customers who do trade uh, the CME exchange as well as Eurex and some other exchanges from India at this time. Pricing for the individual traders is actually, that's available on our website. Uh, you can go to trade.tt. Uh, www.tradingtechnologies.com. And do you want to bring that up? Yeah, actually, if we go to tradingtechnologies.com, go to platforms. Go to platforms. Go to pricing. And we go to pricing, and there, there you will have it. Pricing is right there. Um, we try to be as transparent as we can about the pricing, um, so we put put it in big bold letters up here. Um, okay. Thanks. 
more questions about the pricing. That's what the pricing is. Um, stacker algos. Stacker algos. <laughs> uh, stacker algos. Stacker algos are actually a very common, um, a very common algo type. Um, do they make a profit? I don't know. It really depends upon how you write them. Like I said, everybody has their their own version of their secret sauce. Um, uh, it really depends. Um, if you go to, and I'm going to bring this up again, you go to community.tradingtechnologies.com and you click in the, under popular topics on the right here, if you click on ADL, um, what you're going to find is there a very rich set of information and discussion involving ADL. Um, people are posting um, questions, comments, things that they're doing, etc. Um, if you search in here for Stacker, you're likely to find at least five or six different variations on the Stacker algo. Um, just for everyone's benefit, what the stat, well, I believe what, what you're referring to is a Stacker algo that basically stacks orders on both sides of the market, um, several layers deep. Um, and as the market moves, um, you, these markets move along, uh, these orders move along with the market. There's various nuances associated with building those sorts of algos, and I think you'll find a very rich discussion here involving that. Um, this, almost the competition has broken out on the forums discussing who's who's got a better stacker. Um, so I encourage you to kind of follow along uh, in the forums. Uh, it's it's quite a learning experience. It's a that's a great thing you'll find on the forum too. That there are so many different ways you can do a very simple order type. A lot of people go in there for order type. They want to like build a certain order type, a certain type of stop or stop or something like that. And you'll have five people offer up different ways to do the same type of order, same type of uh, order entry strategy. So. It's a good place to get into to really learn with the platform and learn how to hammer out building algos. Okay, I, I think I've gotten through most of the questions. Um, if there if I've missed any, um, I think I think I've gotten through most of them. Oh, wait, hold on, there's another one here. OTA algo. Does it use accounts selected in the ADL Canvas or in the MD Trader? Um, an OTA algo will use the account that's selected in the MD Trader. Um, because, I'm sorry, where am I? Oh, OTA, yes. It, yes, it uses the account that's selected at Empty Trader. So um, when you do the single click, um, that is one of the things that's passed along to the OTA algo itself, is the account. It's the instrument, the account, the quantity, the, the side, and the price. So all that information is passed along to the algo in a single click. Um, so unlike using the algo dashboard or the auto trader, where you need to fill all of those parameters in individually, um, launching algos from from MB Trader is is real advantageous um, in terms of execution speed, uh, in terms of launching speed, because it just involves a single click. Um, a lot of people like like uh, launching algos from the ladder because you're able to look at the at the, at the market before you actually launch it, um, and you get a clear picture of what's happening. Can I launch multiple algos at one time? Uh, you can. There are actually, if you open the Auto Trader window, the Auto Trader window will allow you to create multiple instances of the same algo. Um, you can then select them all and launch them all at the same time. Um, there are actually a number of customers that do that. When they get up, when they start their 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 trading in the morning, um, they will bring up one or two auto traders, create multiple instances instances of them, fill in the necessary information, or you, you can actually uh, benefit from the fact that we allow you to specify templates for each of the instances, um, and then you can select all of them and launch. So in the time it takes to make a cup of coffee, uh, your your algos will be launched far sooner than that. Um, we also offer Excel integrations. So if you want to create Excel links between uh, links between Excel and AutoTrader or Algo Dashboard, that is fully supported as well. Um, so like I said, a number of traders will open up an, an AutoTrader or an Algo Dashboard, uh, open up their Excel spreadsheets, create links from, from, uh, from Excel into AutoTrader, and select them all and launch. And it's a fairly quick process first thing in the morning and uh, to kind of get things rolling. Um, I know a number of users that, that actually launch hundreds of algos at the same time in this sort of matter. Can, can I control my algos at all when I'm away from the office? Is it, is it, can you do it on my phone? <laughs> yeah, and I, <laughs> I asked that question of Andrew just because I get to ask that question a lot myself. Um, yes, we do have an <laughs> algo dashboard on our phone apps as well. So if you download the phone app TT Mobile for iOS or Android, you have an algo dashboard on there. The algo dashboard allows you to uh, pause and restart algos from your phone. So yeah, that is a nice little added feature as well. So again, if you want to learn, if you want to learn more about ADL, um, oops, um, 
you can go to the community forums. Um, you can also, if you go directly, you go directly to our documentation and you should be able to find a link to ADL here. And this is a, this is a complete set of documentation on each and every block that we have. Um, there are videos that are associated with, with each of these going over the various concepts, how to use, how to use each block, um, et cetera. We're continuing to enrich this. Um, believe it or not, we're finding a lot of information in the community forums um, that are posted by everybody on the community that we're finding so useful that we're actually incorporating back into the documentation. Um, so that it, so there's kind of a single place for, for people to go um, and find all the information they need about ADL. And I understand it's very easy to get a free demo of the platform. How can I do that? Well, well if you go you to, if you actually go directly to trade.tt, I'm sorry, tryttnow.com, and enter your email address, you can actually create a free account and you can begin to demo the platform straight away. Yes, yeah, so that's literally all there is to it. You can go to www.try.tt.com and you'll get there very quickly. Okay. And I'm, I'm locked into a locked in account, which is why I can't get into the account right now because he's using my PC, not his own. Pat's got a better PC than me. <clears throat> okay. Um, are there any further questions? Oops. Um, so see me. And your co-location is automated too if trading those exchanges with one account. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, we are we are the, the new with the new TT platform. We are co-located with all the major exchanges. Um, we are co-located with CME and Aurora and in Frankfurt with for for Eurex. Um, as, as soon as you launch your algo and you choose the colo, um, we will put your algo on on one of a pool of one of a, a pool of servers that we have at each one of these these facilities. Um, so you can trade um, any any of these any of these particular markets, and and one of the big advantages is here is this. Let's say for example you're trading CME right now, and you decide tomorrow that you know what you want to try out a trade on on Eurex. Um, there's no additional cost to that. It's built into the platform in the sense that you can turn around and launch your your, your algo to to Eurex, and we'll put it in the, in the co-location facility in Frankfurt. Um, we there we do offer a pool of servers um, that are located in each one of these facilities. Um, you can get a dedicated server if you want. Um, we do offer uh, that service, um, but if you just want to try things out, you can just launch algos directly to our pool of co-located servers. Um, we refer to these as gen pop servers, general population. Okay, so again, another question about ADL, uh, about technical indicators. As I said, in the first half of next year, we'll be rolling out a new block um, within ADL called the analytics block. Um, the analytics block will provide not only historical data, um, but also the will we'll also provide the ability to to perform uh, studies on the on that historical data. Um, we have ten years worth of historical data that you'll have direct access to as well. Um, so if you want to write your own studies, um, we'll allow that as well. So okay, so there's a question about here here about TTL SDK. I think it's kind of a slight deviation on the topic, but keep in mind that under the covers. Um, ADL generates uh, what we call TT Algo SDK, which is the actual code which runs on the, on the, on the servers themselves. Um, we will be opening up access to the TT Algo SDK directly. So for those of you who can code in C++ and Linux, um, we will be opening that up. Um, we do have a, our first beta customer that is, that is basically um, kicking the tires and, and going live at, as we speak. Um, once that process is done, we want to vet out uh, the process of, of taking at least one customer live then that will be available uh, to the general public. Um, timeline for that probably should be probably end of the year, um, that sort of time frame. Um, uh, keep an eye out on the website. Um, we will be broadcasting information about when that actually is available for the general public. Um, what about web services? Um, again, not strictly related to ADL, but we do offer another API uh, that we call the TT REST API. Um, its commercial release date is December 1st. Um, it will offer um, access into some access into our internal um, our internal REST APIs. Um, it's effectively an Amazon API gateway that fronts this sort of service. Um, if this is something you're looking for, um, please reach out to uh, to your salesperson or to your your broker, whoever you you uh, you use, 
and we'll have we'll, we'll be happy to give you access. Um, today we can we can give you access to this today in the development environment. Um, so, like I said, reach out. We'll be happy to give you access. Okay, can ADL trade Forex? Um, we don't cur currently connect to any Forex exchanges. Um, I'm not sure if there are any plans to do so, Pat, do you know? There's, there's no immediate plans to go to direct Forex, but bear in mind, of course, we do have um, foreign exchange features at CME, and there's some new foreign exchange features actually coming along at Eurex, so look pretty exciting as well. Eurex is gonna offer up a spot Forex uh, contract here. I think that I may have already started doing that, so. We do have some Forex, but not cash Forex, essentially, not spot. Okay, so I think I've gotten to most of them. Um, um, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to answer, ask, ask more questions. You can ask questions directly in the forums. Um, there are people here that man the forums 24 hours a day. Um, so they're, they're happy to answer them if they can't, or if you're looking for a product enhancement, they'll send them on up to me. Um, and we will, like I said, we'll get to them um, as soon as we can. Um, so again, uh, if you want to try it out, um, go to tryttnow.com um, and you can sign up and get a free, uh, free demo of the product um, and play with it in simulation all you like. Nitin, thank you for hosting this. I really appreciate it. Um, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, uh, that was a good round of Q&A. We have uh, still a lot of questions pouring in, and definitely uh, those won't go unanswered. We'll be sharing these questions with Andrew, and he'll be getting back to you, uh, well, or he'll just get in touch with you with the answers to your queries. And just before we conclude, uh, a quick uh, uh, preview of the EPAC program again. So we have a lot of queries coming in for EPAC program as well. So people who want to know about how the program works, what uh, what is the curriculum, how what all is covered, you can get in touch with us on the phone number displayed, or you can visit condensecom slash EPAC and perform. And we will get back to you regarding your queries and on the EPAC program. Uh, to conclude, uh, we would like to thank you all for joining in for this session, and we would like to wish you happy trading. And uh, once you exit this webinar session, don't forget to uh, fill the survey form, and you uh, wish you all a good day. Thank you.